Well, there are some places you never want to visit. This war zone we call Earth has its share of them, and they can be mean and nasty. But thankfully, it's not our only option. Hey, before we get to the message, let me welcome you to Mornings with Bishop Robert. Thanks for joining me. This is the top spot on the internet for coffee with a cleric, and I'm always happy to share a cup with you. You know, my goal is to introduce people to the Jesus they never knew, and then help them get to know him and his word personally and better. So if our time together today speaks to your heart, let me invite you to like, subscribe, and share it with a friend. Also, join our email list so you get Mornings with Bishop Robert sent directly to your inbox every day. And we'll also give you a link to get my book, Count to One, God's Plan for Christian Unity. There's lots of other great benefits, so click the link in the description. You'll find out everything you need to know. Well, there's a saying I've heard whose <laughs> source I can't identify, though I've searched for it for some time. It says, this ain't hell, but you can see it from here. You don't have to look too far to see the effects of the enemy's war against us. Real wars abound in many places, and, and with them, the reports of vicious war crimes. Terrorist activity regularly rears its ugly head, and I get reports almost daily of Taliban torture and murder, most often accompanied by the photos that will hopefully be used against the perpetrators in a war crime tribunal someday. There are some things your eyes simply cannot unsee. Yeah, you can see hell from here. But if you look, you can also see something else. See, today's verse says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And that begs the question, how? Well, the upcoming recreation of the new heaven and the new earth where God proclaims, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. I'm making all things new. That's an encouraging promise. But if you're like me, you're looking for a more present one. I mean, sure, when, when he appears, we'll see him. But, but we who serve him are God's children now. And now is when we need to see him and his presence. Now is when we need his grace. <laughs> in fact, grace upon grace poured into our lives. Now is when we need to have his spirit continually filling us with his power. Now is when we need to see his signs and wonders and miracles. Let me tell you something. As a father, two words that got my focused attention whenever I heard them were, Daddy, help! Well, you and I have a heavenly father who responds to our cry for help too. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. He's listening. Even as my eyes are on hell's fury, his eyes are on me. You see, he counts me among the righteous because Jesus' blood covers my sin. And because of Jesus... The Father's ears are open to my prayers. Yes, he's truly listening. But today's verse isn't about God listening, so how does it tie in? Well, we see God with us in trials because we're not walking through them alone. Like the three men who were thrown into the fiery furnace, we're in the company of the Son of God. Never alone, never abandoned. So we who are pure in heart see God with us as the flames of hell flare up and threaten to consume us. But there's even more to the story because when we face the trials and assaults of life in his power, those around us see something too. First, they can see God with us. The king looked into the fiery furnace and said, Hey, fellas, if we threw three bound prisoners into the furnace, why do I see four people walking free inside? <laughs> the king even commented that the fourth guy looked like the Son of God. 
And the king was right. But second, they can see God working through us. You see, we see God. And we see what he's doing. And like Jesus, we do what we see the Father doing. And in this, we bring glory to God and honor to his name. And as we do, well, we're like lights set upon a stand or like a city on a hillside. Our light shines brightly into their darkness. And our light draws them. And the closer they come, the better their view of God. He'll allow them to see God in us. So they'll come close enough for us to tell them how to meet God. Light, why it's most clearly seen in the darkest of places. No, this ain't hell. But it is a pitched battle between the armies of evil and the church who serves the living God for the souls of those who are not yet saved by grace through faith in Jesus. No, this ain't hell. But you can see it from here. Its gates are trying to hold those who've not yet heard inside its devilish prison. Now, you may have heard that Jesus said the gates of hell would not prevail against his church. Perhaps it hasn't occurred to you. The gates don't move. Gates do not attack. We do. It's his church stepping into the fight to shine the light of Jesus Christ into the deepest and darkest of places. It's the church who's on the attack. And the gates of hell don't stand a chance. No, this ain't hell. But you can't see it from here. And when the army of God engages the enemy, storms in and takes the battle to the enemy, you won't see some demon saying, Welcome to hell. He'll be running. Because my Bible tells me that when I fight the enemy, he will flee. No, this ain't hell. But you can see it from here. So our target is in sight. Let's roll. Well, what's also in sight is the end of our time together. But before I go, let me ask you to help me introduce people to the Jesus they never knew and help them get to know him and his word personally and better. Please like this video to help more people see it. And then click follow or subscribe so that you and I can get together every day. Click that link in the description to join our email list. And of course, one more thing. Share this video with a friend today, please. Because as you do, well, you're part of the team touching more than a million hearts all over the world with the love of Jesus. Thanks for helping.